here, Canada, from coast to coast to coast. Hundreds, thousands of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, men and boys, from the Highway of Tears to the downtown east side, Prince Rupert to Kelowna, British Columbia, from Fort McMurray, Alberta, to Grand Prairie, to Slave Lake, to Nisku, to Calgary, to Edmonton, Saskatoon, Regina, Kawakatoos First Nation in Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, Portage the Prairie, God's Lake, Rossburn, La Paw, Brandon, Manitoba, from Thunder Bay to Kenora to Toronto, Ontario, Kitakan Zibi, Anishinaabe First Nation, to Val d'Or, to Gatineau in Quebec, Halifax to Sydney, Nova Scotia, Campbellton, New Brunswick, from Fort Providence to Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories, to Whitehorse in the Yukon, to Cape Dorset, Nunavut. Tanse. I'm James Fable, co-founder and executive director of Bear Clan Patrol, Inc. In this very special farewell episode, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes, introduce you to some of the people that work on the show, and most importantly, update some of these cases that have gripped our hearts and minds. Every one of these stories is a call to action and a cry for change. From the very beginning, families who lived with the loss of their loved ones have guided the series. But it all started with a dream. Lisa Meaches from Long Plain First Nation in Manitoba had been a film and television producer for many years when the vision came to her to create Taken. So when I found out I was having a daughter, things changed and I thought about all the stories that were being told about our women. Um, I became frightened and afraid for her life. And so I called my business partner, my adopted brother, Kyle, and uh, I was in tears. And so he had to calm me down and I started searching uh, for how I could save her life before she was even born. And so I, I came up with an idea that would introduce um, safe ways of, and proactive ways of helping um, other families and started having discussions very uh, off the radar kind of discussions with families. And then when she was born, it was an amazing experience, but I also knew what she was up against, being indigenous and being a woman. A team was assembled and research on the stories began. At first, no broadcasters would take on the subject matter. Then a little girl named Tina Fontaine was found in the Red River. Everything changed after that. Um, Tina really woke things up, really shook the world. She'll always be remembered as a trailblazer. She'll always be remembered posthumously for the work that she's done, just because we learned from how the community didn't take care of her, didn't step up for her. She's one of those individuals who won't need a, we won't need to know her last name, we just know Tina. Tina. And I'm so grateful to have been able to tell a small part of her story. And I wish that I would have been able to hold her and tell her that I loved her. <laughs> In its first season, Taken captivated the nation with the unsolved cases of Alberta Williams, Ramona Wilson, Ashley Machiskanik, Danielle LaRue, Mary Jane Kreiser, Emily Osman, Tanya Brooks, Sandra Johnson, Maisie Ojik and Shannon Alexander, Sharice Hool, Amber Gabosh, Tanya Nipanek, Vanessa Briere, and Claudette Osborne Tile. Bernadette Smith is Claudette's sister. Claudette went missing in 2008, leaving behind four children and a family who love and miss her. In season one of Taken, Bernie became Taken's head researcher, connecting to loved ones to invite them to share their stories. When Lisa approached me with the idea and asked me if I would like to help and participate, 
I remember being very emotional and thinking, finally, someone to tell the story from the family's perspective, because that's, that is a void that has been there for a long time. You know, with my sister's story, it was always a negative, you know, sex trade, drug addicted, Aboriginal, but never told from that loving growing up and telling the whole story. Because everyone has a story. And, you know, Taken is so beautiful in, in telling those stories and telling them from the family's perspective and honoring, you know, the women and the men and the two spirits and uh, uplifting and helping community fall in love, you know, with these people just as much as we love them. Because these are, you know, even though people aren't directly impacted, you know, we're all impacted because we all live in, in Canada. Of the hundreds and thousands of Indigenous women and girls and men and boys who are missing or have been murdered in Canada, everyone is loved and missed. Has anything changed since Taken first aired? Has justice been served in any of these cases? And how have the members of the Taken team dealt with their own experiences of loss and hope? There are hundreds, if not thousands, of stories of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, men and boys in Canada. For the past five years, and over the course of over 50 episodes, the Taken team has worked with families, law enforcement, experts, academics, and advocates all across the country to tell just a handful of them. Many members of the Taken team have themselves been touched by their own stories of a lost loved one. Taken's co-creator, executive producer, and host is also an episode director. This season, the first season Taken has told the stories of men and boys, Lisa Meech has directed her own loved one's story, Colton Pratt. I pray so hard for him to come back for our community. It's, it's been tough to tell that story. It's been tough to, to talk about him and not feel any, um, any kind of remorse. I try so hard to be strong, you know, especially when I'm editing and we're editing in, in the suite. I know he's missed and loved. Oh my God, he's so loved. And uh, we want him to come home. He needs to know how much he's missed. He was my cousin. He was my cousin. And he just disappeared, he was taken and I feel so helpless. From the beginning of the series, the Taken team has been committed to gender parity, accessibility for team members with disabilities, and providing opportunities for Indigenous writers, directors, and editors. Kayla Hayden became a writer and researcher on Taken, and has also acted in a few different roles on the series. Kayla has her own experience with loss, the murder of her brother Godfrey. Godfrey was 27 in his last year. He was a university student. He was attending the University of Winnipeg and he was gonna be a computer engineer. So he was taking a physics degree, which he was gonna transfer to Minnesota. And he also has a daughter. She is now 12. Her name is Malika Sky Matwick Hayden. <laughs> and Godfrey just always had a lighthearted spirit. He was funny and you know um, he was rarely mad about anything. Godfrey was taken from us on April 17th 2015. He was murdered. It came from an altercation in a back alley where he walked away and they ended up chasing him and stabbing him. It really affected our family because it just you know it spun us into a really bad depression which we're still trying to climb out of. After he was done school, he was gonna work at, you know, one of the big companies like Google or NASA or Facebook, right? And he was planning to take his daughter after that and she knew that. And now she knows that, she, you know, she never gets to go live with her dad. 
From the start of the series, Taken has also been committed to mentorship. Madison Thomas, one of Taken's key editors and directors, started out as a researcher and was nominated for a Canadian Screen Award with the Taken research team for her work. Madison had her own experiences that strengthened her and inspired her to become a mentor. I've been some kind of artist since I can remember, I, whether it was drawing or writing, it was just something I was always drawn to. It was the only thing I ever really wanted to do as a kid. And for me, it really impacted me in a number of ways. Number one, I think it was an outlet. Um, I was raised in a neighborhood where having big emotional responses to things wasn't exactly safe to do. When I was about 14 or 15, uh, English teacher basically was like, hey, there's this free film class that's happening downtown. If you write this letter explaining why you want to attend, they might let you attend for free. Um, and that was a big factor for me because my parents really could not afford extra monetary things. I had a very stable upbringing and home, but you know, extra stuff wasn't always available. I got accepted into Prague Film School in 2012 for their summer intensive program. It's a really prestigious film school in Europe, and I was actually the first uh, Canadian Indigenous person to ever be accepted. Because I have been on the show since season one, as new crew people came on, a lot of times they were assigned uh, to me to just help learn the style of the show, um, learn how we conduct the show, how we conduct ourselves as crew members. So I've mentored uh, quite a few of the crew members over the years and it's been, uh, teaching is also a huge part of my life and the thing that brings me a lot of joy. So to be able to continue that on on Taken is a great thing. Taken's second season started with the story of the tragic murder of Hillary Wilson and went on to share the story of Cheyenne Fox, whose death was initially deemed a suicide. While Cheyenne's episode was in production, Toronto police reopened the case. The season continued with the unsolved stories of Gladys Simon, Delaney Copanace, Jackie Crazy Bull, Danita Big Eagle, Angela Meyer, Tamara Chipman, Belinda Williams, Glenda Morisot and her cousin Kelly Morisot, Mildred Flett, Jennifer Catchaway, and Felicia Solomon. In many cases, the Taken series has reinvigorated the case and brought fresh leads, but all justice takes time. Even when justice is served, families are left with the grief of losing a light from their life. This has been a real game changer, I think, in the sense of being able to help community, to help people out there that have information, to have a place to come and give that information, to come and tell their story, and to really humanize and help um, all of Canada. You know, people have fallen in love with their loved ones. Every one of the stories shared by the families on Taken and all of the cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, men and boys, remind us of the value of life. How has the series given voice to Indigenous people behind the scenes? What is the inspiration that keeps the team going? And can the series continue to have an impact even after it's done? For four seasons, the Taken team has been honored to have been welcomed by the strong, inspiring loved ones of missing and murdered Indigenous people. The loyal community of viewers and the followers of Taken's social media have become like a family. If you have any information that might help solve any of the cases seen on Taken, please visit our website. Season three of Taken opened with Amber Tuckerow's story. And in September of 2018, the Civilian Review and Complaints Commission released a 120-page report declaring that the investigation led by Leduc, Alberta RCMP, in Amber's case was deficient. This is a little comfort to Amber's family. Her murder case remains unsolved. As do the cases of Janet Sylvester, Amanda Cook, Crystal Andrews, Patricia Carpenter, Cheryl Johnson, Nicole Daniels, Leona Brule, Josephine Martin, Elizabeth Dorian, Laura Lee May Francis, and Caitlin Potts. 
An arrest has been made in God's Lake teen Leah Anderson's case, but the trial is pending. Cindy Rupert House's former partner, Levi Laundrie, who refused the lie detector test three times for Cindy's case, pled guilty to manslaughter in an unrelated case and was sentenced to 16 and a half years in 2018. Cindy remains missing and is presumed murdered. From the beginning, the Taken team has brought their own cultural experience to the series. In Ojibwe, we have a cultural teaching called the Eighth Fire Prophecy. It's one of our only written documents, and it speaks of the different ages that have come, and it very accurately predicted residential school, the coming of Europeans, all of that. And according to it, right now, we're in the Seventh Fire, the time of the Seventh Fire, and we're moving towards the Eighth. And that movement from Seventh Fire to Eighth Fire is going to be dictated by a choice that we as humanity, collective humanity, have to make. Are we, to, all the races, all the peoples, are we all gonna come together or are we gonna divide and, you know, go away? Since Taken began, the families of missing and murdered Indigenous people have led a groundswell of awareness and action. Everyone who works on sharing these stories has been inspired. I think the most inspiring moment for me was seeing all the women rise up from these tragedies in their lives and, you know, um, they find a strong voice in them and they say, like, you know, we're not going to be silent about this. This matters. We're humans. It's inspiring for me to see their strength in coming from such a tragic place. Over the course of four seasons, Taken has employed nearly 500 Indigenous actors to help share these stories. Many of these kids, adults, grandparents, and even babies have had their very first acting experience working on the show. Katarina Zierwogel, who started as a writing department intern, then became a social media producer for the series, bore a striking resemblance to Danita Big Eagle, who went missing from Regina, Saskatchewan in 2007. Katarina agreed to take on the role of Danita in the recreations. Um, well, I felt, um, I think it was definitely going to be a challenge. Um, it was important to be accurate uh, for everybody who loved her, for her family and friends to make sure that it was as accurate as possible and so that we could interpret it the best way possible. At the same time, I, I wanted to make sure that I could honor her and her life. As Taken the series ends, those who have worked on it are overwhelmed with gratitude for the families. I would like to say thank you for sharing your stories. It's incredibly brave, like amazingly brave that you shared these stories to millions of Canadians. And, you know, it's so hard to share stories in the first place because of that fear that people won't listen to you or won't care. And to get past that and share it for a television show that teaches people about these issues, it's, it's an amazing thing to do. We are going to continue to do the work uh, that's already been in front of us, uh, that we will make sure that those stories are going to be continued to be listened to um, and that it is so important that you know that you have made changes for individuals, Indigenous people who are men, women, two-spirited, and to continue to do that work, to continue to tell the stories. The team of Taken is also full of gratitude for its audience community the impact of the series has been tangible. I've had so many people that have um, messaged me that uh, have said, you know, it's inspired them to, to tell their story or it's inspired them to um, get involved in the issue, to help, you know, whether it's going to vigils or helping to, you know, walk in Bear Clan or to help with Drag the Red that people didn't know about this before, you know, and this is, this uh, series has really helped to 
put missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls' stories and Two Spirit on, you know, the, the national stage. My hope is that Taken will have really shaken things to the point where the truth will be told in a really powerful way where we learn from this. If you have any information that might help solve any of the cases shared on Taken, visit our website. Thank you. Echo say. And miigwech to every one of you who helps keep these stories alive.